This is At the Public Library, the video source for news and information about the San Francisco Public Library system. This month's show highlights two new exhibitions now on display at the main library and provides program information for this month's large screen video centennial tribute to Paul Robeson. All this and more coming up on At the Public Library. Hey kids, have fun this summer reading books and earning prizes at the San Francisco Public Library. Children 13 years and younger can sign up for the Children's Summer Reading Club, Reading What a Trip, at their neighborhood branch library, June 6th through August 8th. Sponsored by the Friends of the San Francisco Public Library, the Summer Reading Club is sure to be loads of fun with lots of great books, entertainment, and fantastic prizes. Here's how the program works. After signing up, kids check out any books they want. When they're finished reading or having books read to them if they don't read yet, they come back to the library and record the time they've spent reading. Prizes will be awarded for every two hours spent reading. And after eight hours, readers get to choose from one of the following grand prizes. Two entries to the California Academy of Sciences. Two tickets to the Bay Area Discovery Museum two admissions to the San Francisco Zoo, two tickets to a Giants baseball game, or a great brand new paperback book. Throughout the eight weeks of the Summer Reading Club, the branches and the main library will host a variety of fun and entertaining programs with clowns, singers, dancers, storytellers, magicians, and more. So join the fun and sign up for Reading What a Trip this summer at the San Francisco Public Library. Here's a sampling of some fun summer programs for children coming up this month at the Public Library. Jimbo the Clown joins in the summer reading fun on Tuesday, July 7th, 10.30 a.m. at the Marina Branch Library. Thursday, July 16th, 10.30 a.m. at the Eureka Valley Harvey Milk Memorial Branch. Jimbo swings by the West Portal Branch on Saturday, July 18th at 11 a.m. On Tuesday, July 21st at 10.15 a.m., catch Jimbo at the Golden Gate Valley Branch. And finally, on Monday, July 27th, 10.15 a.m., join Jimbo at the Bayview Anna E. Wadden Branch Library. Doll maker Karen McKee will present a special doll making workshop for children six years and up on Thursday, July 16th, 3 p.m. at the Ingleside Branch Library. Singer-musician Lisa Atkinson will make two appearances at the library this month. First on Tuesday, July 14th, 10.30 a.m. at the Sunset Branch. And on Thursday, July 16th, 10.30 a.m. at the Presidio Branch Library. On Wednesday, July 29th, the Parkside Branch will present a special family night program of Japanese stories with Ethnotech at 7 p.m. There's much more in store for children this month at the San Francisco Public Library. For a complete listing of children's programs, check out the printed version of At the Public Library, published monthly by the Friends of the San Francisco Public Library, and available for free at all San Francisco neighborhood branch libraries. Hi, I'm Rich Rodriguez of the San Francisco Giants. Today, I'm making a pitch for the Public Library's Summer Reading Program. When I'm not facing an opponent, I like to read a good book. History, novels, and science fiction are all my favorites, and they can be your favorites too. Go to your local library and join me in the summer reading program. You can win some great prizes and go on some great adventures. Don't strike out. Books, check them out. Books, check them out. Imagination can take you to where you want to be. Are you curious? How can you find out? Books, check them out. Books, check them out. Read about stars and cars, play electric guitars, or cops that work hard, patrolling the boulevard, the heavyweight champ and his craziest bow. Books, check them out. Books, check them out. At your library. SF Files, the truth is in here. 
the extraordinary San Francisco Public Library teen summer reading program for high school aged teens runs from June 6th through July 18th. This year's teen summer reading program combines reading and a list of suggested activities all geared to make your summer extra fun. Some of the suggested activities include a visit to the X-Files website, trek up to Twin Peaks and report on your observations. Name three movies with UFOs or other unexplained phenomena. Exciting prizes of movie passes, music store gift certificates, and books will be awarded as teens complete the activities and read their books of choice. And those who read six books and complete six activities become eligible for a chance at some great raffle prizes to be given away at the teen summer reading grand finale in the main library's Corette Auditorium on Friday, July 24th at 2 p.m. The grand raffle prizes include a behind the scenes visit to a Giants game and to the radio station Wild 94.9 and the first cut KRON teen TV show and many more great prizes. SF Files is being sponsored by Teen Services at the San Francisco Public Library and the Friends of the San Francisco Public Library. High school aged teens may sign up for the SF Files teen summer reading program at the following branch libraries. The main library's teen center the Bayview Anna E. Wadden Branch Library, the Bernal Heights Branch, the Chinatown Branch, the Glen Park Branch, the Ingleside Branch, the Potrero Branch Library, Portola Branch, Sunset, Visitation Valley, and the Children's Bookmobile. We'll be expecting you. The Main Library is proud to continue its free Thursday noon video and film showings with a special centennial tribute to Paul Robeson. The series begins on July 2nd with Paul Robeson, the tallest tree in our forest, made in 1977. This detailed biography of the gifted scholar, athlete, singer, and humanitarian was produced using materials in the Paul Robeson archive. Excerpts from many of his performances are seen in this 16 millimeter film showing. On July 9th, join us for Body and Soul, the controversial 1925 film by pioneer African-American filmmaker Oscar Michaud, follows the path of an escaped convict who poses as a pastor in a small southern town and casts his lustful eye upon a member of his flock. This Kino edition features a new postmodern jazz score by Honk, Whale, and Moan, as well as a prologue discussing Michaud's battle with the New York Censor Board over the film's controversial content. Song of Freedom will be shown on July 16th. In this J. Elder Wills film, a British-born stevedore finds fame as a concert vocalist, then goes to Africa to trace his lineage. Robeson performs four songs in this soaring musical drama made in 1936. On July 23rd, Thursday Noon Videos features Big Fella, a lively British musical virtually unseen in the United States until this 1996 video release. Robeson stars as a Marseille dock worker who harbors a young boy who's run away from his wealthy white parents. The film features six songs and is newly restored by the Library of Congress. The series concludes on July 30th with Jericho. Also known as Dark Sands, this 1937 Thornton Freeland drama includes Robeson performing such well-known songs as My Way, Silent Night, and Shortenin' Bread. The production of Jericho provided Robeson with his first opportunity to visit Africa, where many of the film's exteriors were shot. So don't miss this centennial celebration of Paul Robeson every Thursday at noon during the month of July. 
And while you're in the library, check out the Paul Robeson Centennial Exhibit on display in the African American Center on the third floor of the main library. Portraits and a chronology of Robeson's life are featured with the Paul Robeson 100th Birthday Committee Timeline Panels, which were donated by the Left Foundation. Shaping San Francisco, an interactive multimedia program about the history of San Francisco, is currently on display in the main library, sixth floor Skylight Gallery. Chris Carlson, the Shaping San Francisco producer, stopped by the main library recently to tell us more about this unique project. Shaping San Francisco is an interactive multimedia excavation of the lost history of San Francisco presented on a personal computer. And the way we've done this is we've worked on it for about three and a half years and we're trying to tell all the lost stories of San Francisco's history so that we can somehow get back in touch with how the world got to be the way it is today, especially this city, since this is what we focused on. So Shaping San Francisco gives you coverage over uh, 22 different neighborhoods and 18 different subjects, and that's where we are today. This is the very first edition, and we hope that Shaping San Francisco will grow and grow, and that you people out in San Francisco who are interested in contributing your own stories will seek us out and give us your stories, and this thing can keep getting bigger and better and more realistic and more accurate portrayal of the city's history. And what it consists of is a series of di digital uh, files. There are photographs, there are animations, there are videos, there are sounds, two kinds of sound, and a great deal of text. And this has all been knit together by a software package that we uh, bought and used to do it. And it's taken us about 12,000 hours of work to put all these things together into the over 1,000 screens that you would see when you uh, cruise around inside of Shaping San Francisco. Well, there's a, a small group of us that did a large percentage of the work, and only about four or five of us that did a very large percentage of the work, but we've benefited from the contributions of over 300 people and uh, a number of our local community groups and historical societies, and including the public library, which has been extremely helpful, making available an amazing phot photographic collection right around the corner over there on the other part of the sixth floor in the history room. Well, let's take a quick look at how the program works. So if you come up to the library on the sixth floor and you turn right out of the elevators, you'll find this, this exact setup. That's where we're sitting right now. And as you walk up to it, it's in what we call teaser mode. And that's to tease you to sit down and play with it. That's what we'd like you to do. So right now, there's a series of what we call hindsight continuums, which are before and after juxtapositions of the same location, shot in the 20s or the 30s, or even earlier in some cases. And the same shot taken again today and you'll see it going around and around, and it's an endless loop. So what you're encouraged to do is to come up and hit enter on the keyboard or click anything with the, with the uh, mouse, and then it goes into its own little routine here, and it'll introduce the project to you. Now, one of the things it's going to tell you to do when you use this project is to click once with the left mouse button. That's your basic navigational system. If you're going to walk through the city and wander around, you're going to use your feet. If you're going to wander around through Shaping San Francisco, you're going to use your left mouse button clicking with your finger. So now we have this basic menu screen has showed up, and you'll see these blue labels come on, and it encourages you to choose something that you might be interested in looking at. And if you don't want to do a tour, a custom tour that we prepared for you, then you can go to the main menu, one click, and now you're on this screen, which is the main menu. And the main two areas that you would want to check out is either the neighborhoods or the subjects. And since we've been asked to look for baseball, we'll go to the subjects. We call it the Encyclozine, a combination of Encyclopedia Magazine. So one click on Encyclozine. Now we're on the screen that gives you all the choices of subjects that we have. And uh, as you can see, there's natural history and a bunch of different ethnic groups, uh, labor history, Chinese, public art, uh, give me shelters about housing, et cetera. Here's baseball. You click once on baseball and it'll pop us onto the menu page for baseball. And there we are. <clears throat> and we get a little bit of a, a musical interlude offering you some hot dogs too. And so once you're in baseball, you have a choice of a number of different screens and you can pick out any of these buttons and one click on a button will take you to that screen. So if you go to 1860s early days, You'll see it takes us to this screen here, and that's actually Bernal Heights going up to the left in this picture. And this is approximately where they just tore down the Bernal dwellings on uh, Cesar Chavez and Folsom. And in those days, in the 1868 period, this was a baseball field. It was one of the earliest baseball fields in San Francisco. 
And another little bit of lost history about San Francisco's uh, early baseball is that the very first train that ran across the country, the very first transcontinental railroad, brought with it on board the Cincinnati Red Stockings to play exhibition baseball in San Francisco. Now, once you're in a given topic, and you're, in this case, we're in baseball, you'll see down here is what's called the tool belt. And the tool belt offers you a number of different tools to figure out what you want to do and how you want to organize your experience of wandering around through San Francisco's history. The main button that you use a lot is wander. And that's the far right button on this tool belt. So one click on wander will take us to the next screen in baseball. And if you were in, say, a neighborhood like the Mission or North Beach or you know, the Richmond District, you would still have the same tool belt and you'd click on wander to go to the next screen, next screen, next screen, every time you click it. So that's one of the handy things. Now we have a picture on here of the uh, Pioneers versus the Haverleys at California Baseball Park, October 9th, 1887, at the corner of Hayton Stanion. Not a baseball stadium there today, but that's what there was at that time. And of course, Casey at the bat, you'll see there's sometimes there are red words in the text. In this case, it's Casey at the bat. That's what we call a hot word in multimedia parlance. So one click on Casey at the bat, and it takes you to a new screen, and here you have the poem, Casey at the Bat, which was actually originally published in the San Francisco Examiner in the 1880s. And the notorious Mudville Nine, where actually Mudville was the nickname for Stockton in those days, which was apparently underwater a good deal of the time. So that's a brief look at how you wander around through a given topic. Now you also have these other tools on here. If you go to the map on the tool belt, and it's also a choice to pick neighborhoods on the main menu, you come to this screen, which shows you the whole city of San Francisco. And as the cursor moves around on the screen, you'll see I'm just passing it around without clicking. The names of the neighborhoods pop open. And so Bernal Heights, The Mission, Potrero Hill, South of Market. One neighborhood we gave a name, Tender Knob Plus. And sometimes it's a little hard to choose neighborhoods and figure out where the borders of them are. It's one of the fun things about doing a project like this is you have to make your own decisions and your own ideas about where you want to draw your borders. So we chose that. And uh, any one of these neighborhoods now you can click on. So if you were interested in Golden Gate Park, you could click on Golden Gate Park. And then you come into a sub map that tells you about you know, what you could find in this, in this particular part of town. So if you click in one of these dotted boxes, up pop little buttons that you can choose. And you click on one of those buttons, and it'll take you right down into the project. So that's essentially your navigational system. And there's one other very useful tool, which I'll quickly tell you about which is called the library. Interestingly enough, here we are at the library. But this is our library, and it's a series of spines, like books on a shelf. And this is the one place in the project. And you get to this from the library button on the, on the tool belt. And the, uh, the library spines here, all those book spines, are actually the names of all the chapters we have. And any one of those chapters will take you directly to that uh, subject or neighborhood. If you double click, this is the only time you ever double click in our program is right here. So that's a brief look at how to run around in Shaping San Francisco, and we hope you'll find it inspiring and uh, will contribute some of your own thoughts and some of your own history and photographs and grandma's diaries and home movies and all that good stuff to us. Our phone number, if you want to call us, is 415-626-2060. You can check out the Shaping San Francisco multimedia kiosk for yourself now through July 31st in the main library, sixth floor, Skylight Gallery. The main library's Duet Gallery on the lower level presents a photography exhibition premiere featuring two collections of photographs of lesbians and their families. Lesbian Mothering, an Everyday Affair by Kathy Cade and Women in Love, Portraits of Lesbian Mothers and Their Families by Barbara Seda and Diane Herrera will be on display from June 26th through August 15th. At the public library caught up with Kathy and Barbara as they readied the exhibit for the public. They reflected on their work as photographers and on the lesbian families exhibit. Uh, the inspiration for this project was began in 1993. My life partner Diana and I were invited to a Thanksgiving dinner in Santa Fe, New Mexico. And when we got to this old farmhouse, we realized that all the women that were there were lesbian mothers, and all the kids that were there were the children of lesbian mothers. So it was really that evening that we were sitting in old rocking chairs in the living room that I realized the importance of documenting the, the lives and the stories that were gathered there. So we decided to do a book and uh, did a fundraising and got on the road and began to meet with a lot of mothers and grandmothers throughout the United States. I started photographing lesbian moms in 1972 
which was the same time I started photographing anything. Uh, it was also the same spring that I came out as a lesbian, that I knew myself as a lesbian. So it all happened all at once in this same spring. Uh, and the first photograph I ever had published was of a lesbian mom. Two lesbian moms and their kids. It's, it's the pictures over there, it's a, the, I call it the baseball family. What strikes me as different about photographing lesbian mothers versus other photo work that I do, what's hard for me is wondering if, you know, three months, six months, 10 years later, whether the mothers will still be in a position to let these images be visible because of how lesbian moms are oppressed and um, the risks that they take around being visible. But it is something that is harder for me and it's one of the hardest things about photographing and being a documentary photographer for me is the fear that in some way my exhibiting a photograph is going to cause difficulty in somebody's life. I think this exhibition is a tremendous tribute to the 10 million, estimated 10 million lesbian mothers in the United States. I, I don't know if an exhibit like this has happened anywhere and I feel the significance of it happening here in the library underscores its educational value, its artistic value and also its historical significance. And the thing I enjoyed the most about our work, showing our work together is Kathy began photographing lesbian mothers and their families over 25 years ago, just the beginning of the insemination movement in the 70s and 80s. So you get um, an incredible historical perspective in her work. And, and there's a, um, a sense of the, these kind of very precious privileged moments. You know, there's a, a sensuality and eroticism around birth and motherhood in her work that I think is unparalleled in, in any work I've seen. And uh, the work that Diana and I did, we traveled the United States in two years and did an epic sweep of the country. So you get a, a sense of the, um, the spectrum and the variation of lesbian families living in urban centers and remote rural areas, you know, all across the United States and tremendous diversity in terms of ethnicity and religion, economics, um, conception, family configuration. Um, so I, th I think there's a richness here um, that I hope will inspire many people and enlighten and illuminate um, issues that people, uh, you know, I think uh, a lot of people, they don't know about lesbian moms, you know, especially the mainstream, you know. And so I hope this, sh this show sheds a lot of light on uh, the richness of our community. Come see this illuminating collection of lesbian family portraits for yourself. Showing now through August 15th in the Main Library's Duet Gallery. A more perfect union, Japanese Americans and the United States Constitution, a Smithsonian exhibition and local program series commemorating the 10th anniversary of the Civil Liberties Act of 1988 is currently running at the Main Library through August 6th. The primary exhibit, located in the Main Library's sixth floor Skylight Gallery, originates from the Smithsonian's National Museum of American History and highlights through photographs, oral history, video disc, letters, and other documents the story of the Japanese American internment during World War II and the violation of constitutional rights. The exhibition and programs are being presented by the San Francisco Public Library and the Japanese American Historical Society in conjunction with the San Francisco chapter of the Japanese American Citizens League. Children of the Detention Camps, 1942 through 1946, a collection of photographs is also included in the More Perfect Union exhibition, as well as two other exhibits, Epicenter of Eviction, San Francisco and the Japanese American Internment, and Obata's Topaz, selections from the internment paintings of Chirua Obata. Another part of the exhibition, Children of the Camps, 
an American story of civil liberties and interactive multimedia kiosk, can be found in the main library's Children's Center. In conjunction with the More Perfect Union exhibition, the library will present a variety of children's programs in an effort to create a better understanding of the ramifications of the Japanese internment. A major part of the children's program series is being sponsored by the Friends of the San Francisco Public Library and will include storytelling, arts and crafts programs, and a performance of Japanese taiko drumming. The complete schedule of children's programs is listed in the printed version of At the Public Library. The A More Perfect Union, Japanese Americans and the United States Constitution Public Program Series will take place in the main library's Corette Auditorium. This month's programs include on Saturday, July 11th at 1 p.m., Bugle Boy Blues, Big Band and Swing Music of World War II, a lecture and performance by George Yoshida, author of Reminiscing in Swing Time, Japanese Americans in American Popular Music, and Michael Sasaki. Of special interest to teens, Brenda Wong Aoki presents Tales of Love and Passion, a solo performance, also on Saturday, July 11th at 3 p.m. Stories from Camp, an oral history panel discussion will be held on Saturday, July 18th at 1 p.m., and will be followed at 3 p.m. by the video documentary Prejudice and Patriotism, the story of the Japanese American Military Intelligence Service during World War II. And the final program, Japanese American Redress, Lessons for Civil Rights and Social Action, a panel discussion and video presentation moderated by Professor Rita Takahashi, will take place on Saturday, July 25th, at 1 p.m. The San Francisco Public Library has also created a book list for children and teens to complement the A More Perfect Union exhibition, running now through August 6th at the main library. Want to learn how to read? Want to help someone else learn to read? Contact Project Read of the San Francisco Public Library at 557 4388. Project Read is an adult literacy program that provides volunteer one-to-one -one tutoring for adult learners. Project Read's support of tutors and students includes tutor orientation and training, continuing education workshops for tutors and students, reading diagnostics for students, family programs, and referrals to classroom instruction at community college centers and to other agencies in the community. There are many ways you can help adults achieve their personal reading goals. Call Project Read to find out how. Learn to read or be a reading tutor. Phone 557-4388. Friends for Life volunteers bring the riches of the San Francisco Public Library to people who can no longer visit the library themselves. Friends for Life volunteers provide a link between the San Francisco Public Library and people with AIDS or HIV disease. If you would like to be a Friends for Life volunteer or you are in need of the services Friends for Life provides, call 557-4352 for more information. Thanks for watching at the Public Library here on CityWatch Cable Channel 54. You can catch at the Public Library Monday mornings from 9.30 to 10.30 a.m. and from 12.30 to 1.30 p.m. Friday evenings from 8 to 9 p.m. and Saturdays from 12 noon to 1 p.m. See you next time.